if we're rolling, we want to make sure you get a lot of product on your roller, whether it's a paintbrush or a roller. And I just gently saturate it and then roll it back across those uh, ribs. And it might drip a little bit, even though you can say it's not dripping, but the thing's completely full. I don't push as hard as I come down. I kind of come down and you can do like a little end. What I'm doing is getting most of the material the paint on the wall, and then I can come back and kind of fill in. And I'm just pushing that paint back into the wall, spreading it out so it's consistent, because we know it was much heavier where I initially touched the wall. So I go back. You start heavy at the top, right? Or push hard Does it, well, when you first, uh, it, you're not gonna push as hard when you first hit it. And so I've got a pretty, you know, you go over it just a couple of times back and forth and I'll even come off. And right now I'm not pushing as hard, but I'm just trying to make sure I pick up any excess paint. And then I can come hit here again. Again, I got a lot of paint on here. There's no, you know, you can see it. The lines that it's creating as it's dripping there. That's a lot of paint. And I'm gentle in the beginning. And then as I get more of it, I can push down a little more. And you can see I'm getting less paint there. I'm gonna come back and pick up some of that excess paint. Doesn't even have to tape off. You wanna be careful you're not spinning too fast when you hit the bottom because centrifugal force is throwing little tiny bits of paint around. And uh, if you come down here and feel it, if you're spinning really fast, you're gonna pick up a whole bunch of paint. It, as it spins fast, it'll throw the paint off. So I don't go too fast when I hit the bottom or the top. And if you're extremely careful, you can come down and start to get a pretty tight line down here. I miss sometimes, but now somebody can come back in with a paintbrush and uh, just cut that in at the very at the very end there. Plenty of paint, get lots of material. And, and then and what they recommend too is you can do full length. When you come back across, you want to keep a wet line basically. So I don't want to keep coming all the way back to here, but my last strip was right here, so I'm working and keeping that wet. You keep a wet line as you paint, as you go. And I can just go up and down. I'm pushing it in, making sure it's getting into all the little grooves. And I might come back just a little bit to make sure. Again, as I'm kind of doing my final push, sometimes you get a little too much there. And that's what a little wipe is going to be for, so we don't uh, get it on our baseboard. A little wet rag. Yep, wet rag paint comes up real easy when it's wet. Really saturate it. What's the best paint you've used so far? I mean, I've been pretty happy with the, the uh, what is that, Bear from Home Depot's been good. What's the top line of one called? I think it's Marquee. Is there top of the line? I don't know if you need to go all the way to top of the line, but you know, it depends on the quality of your house, I guess, and what you want to do. I definitely wouldn't do the bottom line paint of any brand because the time and effort it takes to paint to save, even if it was $10 a gallon, the amount of effort you have to put into clearing out, taping off, cleaning, prepping, getting the furniture out of the way, it's more than worth putting better paint on to know that you won't have to come back and paint it as often. And it handles usually a little better, the, the banging that might happen on a wall and you get less chipping probably. Spreading it back and forth, just spread it on there trying to get an even coat. Now you can even come in and cut it right here. I can come in a little closer. In fact, I'm gonna get a little, a, what I will do, instead of doing a full, I won't get quite as much paint on there. And I'm gonna come into this corner now. 
What I don't want to do is with the edge of my roller hit the already painted wall that's on the left, the one that's butting up to it, but I can get in pretty close. There we go. And then get up there. If I want to really get in the corner, I can just push. Just slide it across. Just kind of slide it across there. We'll really take care of that when you get a brush, but now I have to kind of clean that up a bit. I'm looking for any drip lines. Like I had a lot of paint on my brush just then when I came here. So I'm gonna, there was probably a drip line right along where my roller was. I'm gonna have to come back and pick up any extra paint. That's what the kind of final touch is, is you're picking up that extra paint. You used Marquee not too long ago, right? It was what, 15? Well, I bought some Benjamin Moore paint that was $70 a gallon. I will say it was pretty nice. It had great coverage. And uh, after it dried, boy, it, it didn't ship as easily as some Lowe's Valspar paint that I had I had actually painted it once with the Lowe's Valspar, and uh, it was it was uh, prone to easy deeming and chips if anything bumped into it. So this is Home Depot Bear. This is the Home Depot Bear, though. I've been I've been pretty happy with the using it. I do a, I do a quick piece of tape over the outlet. That way, when I come around the outlet. Uh, even if I hit it a little bit, it's covered. It's a, that's a nice, that's, that's worth taping off um, so that uh, you don't have to worry about cleaning up an outlet that happened to get a little spray, stray paint on it. You're just looking to spread that out nice and smooth and not have any excess. We use a sprayer? I haven't sprayed, but I have friends who spray and you gotta just make sure, again, you don't hit too heavy in one spot and lighten others, but boy, it goes pretty fast. And it's really nice for nooks and crannies because it hits in there real nice. And uh, oh, 100%, all about the prep when you're spraying because then it goes on really fast. I had a friend spray some baseboards for me and that was nice because it left a nice gloss finish and I didn't have any uh, any uh, paint brush marks, no brush marks on it. We're gonna have to pull some of our drop cloth over pretty soon, but yeah, you want nice and heavy. You don't want one of these people that just goes and, you know, never just start going in all sorts of directions like that. You wanna lay it out and nice little levels there. And we go through a lot of paint. There's a lot of paint on this wall and we can probably some of the nicer paints nowadays, if they say single coat, you better make sure you're putting a lot of paint on. Oop, got a little extra there. Not good. Any more tips and tricks you wanna throw to the audience out there? When you're pouring out of the paint can, they have some uh, lids that you can, once you've pulled off the metal lid, it's actually a rubber lid nowadays. It's, I think they're red, it has a spout on it. Those are really, really, I'm pushing down on here because as you can see, my roller is starting to separate a little bit. Um, those are great for pouring because when people pour out of a paint can, as you can see, look at all this excess paint that got in there because it got tipped this direction. And uh, you don't have that problem when you put this other kind of lid on there. Because this now, you gotta get a paintbrush in there. It's gonna, you put that back on, it's just gonna act as uh, like glue, holding it in place. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And um, they also have a, a blade that snaps into place, but it still makes a pretty big mess. You tell them how you clean your, um, what do you call it? Not the wrong brushes, roller? The roller. The paint roller? That's where you get one of those scrapers that has a little half moon shape cut out of it. You can get, sometimes up to a cup of paint out of one of these rollers. There's a lot of rollers and you just, you can scrape that with that roller. It would scrape all the paint right back into there. And then if you have pretty good high pressure water outside with a nozzle sprayer, I'll hold my nozzle like this and I can spray it. That thing will spin super fast after I scrape most of it off. Are you covered in paint? 
Now, because I'm spraying it this direction, my, this hand might get a little bit, but I sprayed off really well. You had rollers? Oh, I've had, a, I've had a, yeah. I mean, it takes time. Some people don't want to put that time in, but uh, if some of these rollers, these roller heads are pretty nice and it's worth it when you get a good roller. And I like, I like using, and on a surface like this, they talk about the nap of the roller, which is how thick the roller is. Uh -huh. Think of it as the, the length of the hair, basically. Um, I think this was probably a 3 8 nap. I've gone even half inch on um, drywall like this that's got the, the orange peel finish on it. And um, that seems to work pretty good. If you're doing stucco outside, I've used a 3 quarter inch nap. Because the thicker the nap, the more it can get into the, the, I got too much paint on my roller there to take some off here. The thicker the nap, the better it works on a, a coarse surface. And if you have outdoor stucco and you got to get, push that paint into all the nooks and crannies. See how I'm getting a line right here? Yeah. That's because it's, it's too wet on this end. So sometimes I'll take that off like that and then just wipe it all up and I'm not, I'm not leaving an edge anymore. Spend a little bit more money to get a better paint. Better paint, good roller. Definitely use a pole. If I was having to do all this by hand like this, I would not be able to, to cover nearly as fast and as much material. I mean, that's eight feet, eight foot ceiling, and I can, I can do it all in a matter of seconds, and I don't need a, a step stool or anything. Very, very handy to have a, a little four foot screw on extender there. Makes a huge difference. All right, guys, there you go. I just want to show this to you. Tips and tricks on painting. Uh... Now, now that Bundy has his own house, he's going to be doing a lot of home improvement. Obviously, we're going to come back with a brush later on to be able to hit this corner. And then, of course, we'll brush up near the ceiling. You're using a flat ceiling finish paint, different paint. Even if it's the exact same color white, you're going to use a flat ceiling. The higher the sheen, the more it's going to reflect the light. And so when you have uh, a ceiling, it's pretty standard to just paint that. I don't think it's here right now, but you can see while it's wet, you can kind of, you, know, you can see on another wall, there's not a whole lot of imperfections. Ah, right yep, there. yep, you can see it there. Um, yeah, it just depends on how many little so holes. So the higher the sheen, the more imperfections you're The gonna more see. imperfections you're going to see because it shines, uh, the, it reflects the light better. If you have a flat paint, it does not reflect the light as much and you won't see as many imperfections. I prefer having a slight sheen to it because it's easier to wipe off. It's more difficult to clean a flat finish. In kitchens, you're going to want to use semi-gloss because you get food splatter, same with bathrooms, and that wipes off a shinier surface easier. Usually door trims, doors, any of the trim, baseboards. Um, that right there. Yep, trim around the windows and stuff. That's, that's semi-gloss. Semi -gloss. And you can see if you hit it full, right. Is there a full gloss? There's a full, yeah, that's semi. You could do full gloss on that material as well if you'd like. It, it, it's kind of either way. I actually use eggshell or satin on a wall. Some people say no, use a flat, but I, I would prefer to have easier cleanup than worry about seeing some imperfections. This is an I believe this is an eggshell. It's usually it's flat, eggshell, satin, semi gloss, and then high gloss or full gloss.